So, have you ever thought that you should also create a Discord bot, or wondered how Discord bots are made, but you gave up because you didn't know how to make one? Well, now you're in the right place. I'll teach you how to make a Discord bot using Discord.js and JavaScript. So if you haven't watched my JavaScript series yet, make sure to watch it first, and then we'll begin this Discord.js series. And make sure to join our Discord server because we have some awesome events, challenges, and coding help if you ever face any issues. The link is in the description, so join now and let's say hello to the developers. All right, so I guess we've had enough unnecessary talk. Now, let's start our series. First, there are a few things we need to install. The very first thing we need is a code editor. And for that, we'll use Visual Studio Code. So go ahead and download that quickly. After that, we'll use Node.js, so you'll need to install Node.js as well. We'll discuss what it actually is later on. And yes, you'll find all the links in the description. So after downloading, make sure to install both Node.js and Visual Studio Code. Then open Visual Studio Code just like I have it opened here. And you'll see an interface like this, or maybe slightly different, but that's not an issue. This is our Visual Studio Code editor, where we'll be writing our code. All right, so first of all, what is Node.js, which we just installed? Node.js is a tool that allows us to run JavaScript outside of the browser, directly on our computer. Normally, JavaScript is used inside web pages and runs in the browser, but with Node.js, we can use JavaScript to build things like websites, Discord bots, servers, and work with files or databases. In simple terms, Node.js gives our computer the ability to understand and run JavaScript just like the browser does. That's why it's an essential tool when working on back-end projects or building bots. Okay, so I won't go too deep into things, we'll just focus on the main parts. The rest you'll start to understand on your own as we use them. All right, so right now you can see that there's nothing here. It's completely empty. In this series, we'll also learn how to create an advanced handler, step by step. As we move forward, we'll keep adding advanced features to our handler. Nice, right? Now, let's create a new folder and open it. You can either create a new folder on your computer first and then open it from here, or you can open the folder directly from here and then create one inside it. So, I'll open Visual Studio Code, go to the desktop, and create a new folder named Discord JS Series, and then I'll open it. As you can see, it's now opened in our Visual Studio Code, but it's still empty because we haven't created any files or folders in it yet. So first of all, let me zoom in a bit so you all can see everything clearly. All right, maybe this much is enough. Now let's set things up. We're going to use Node.js along with Discord.js. So for that, we need to set up a Node.js project, which is very easy. At the top here, you'll see the terminal option. Click on it and open a new terminal. After that, type npm init and hit enter. Now it's asking for the package name. We won't give anything here and we'll just hit enter. Next, it's asking for the version. We'll skip that too, and press enter. Same for the description, skip. Now it's asking for the entry point, which is important. This is where we give the name of our main file, the one we wanna run, but we haven't created any file yet, so we'll skip this as well. We'll skip test command, git, and all the remaining options. In the end, just type yes. You'll now see that a file named package.json has been created. Now you might be a bit confused about what npm is and what this package.json file is, and what all this stuff written inside it means, so let's understand that now. NPM, which stands for Node Package Manager, is a tool that comes with Node.js and is used to install and manage packages or libraries, like Discord.js for building a Discord bot. When we run the npm init command, we're basically telling npm that we want to start a new Node.js project. This command creates a file called package.json, which contains basic information about the project, like its name, version, description, and most importantly, a list of dependencies the project needs to work. Now, during npm init, when it asks us for the package name, version, and description, that's because those details are useful when you're creating your own npm package to publish and share with others. But since we're just making a private project for ourselves, we skipped all those questions and simply typed yes to move forward. Now, you might be wondering, why do we even create a package, and where does it go when we publish it? So, here's the thing. There's an official website for NPM, and when you visit it, you'll find thousands of packages created by other developers that we can use in our own projects just by installing them. 
That's exactly what we're going to do with Discord.js. And yes, Discord.js itself is also an NPM package. So I hope by now you've got a basic understanding of what NPM is and how it works. Now let's talk about the package.json file. This file is like the heart of your Node.js project. It keeps track of important project details, like the name, version, description, the main file to run, and most importantly, all the dependencies your project needs to function. So whenever you install a package using NPM, it automatically gets added to the package.json file under the dependencies section. That way, if someone else wants to use your project, they can simply run one command, npm install, and npm will automatically install all the required packages listed in that file. It's a super helpful way to manage and share your project setup. And yes, you might be thinking, hey, there's no dependencies section showing in the package.json file. That's completely fine. It will appear automatically once we install a package. Right now, we haven't installed anything, so it's empty. So now, let's start building our basic handler. First, we'll create a folder. To do that, hover over here and click on this icon to create a new folder. We'll name this folder SRC. And you can actually name it anything you want, but SRC is a good standard. Inside the SRC folder, we'll now create a new file. This will be our main file. I'll name it index.js, but you can name it main.js or something else if you like. It's totally up to you. All right, so our file has been created. And now we'll start writing the code. First, we'll write const, then open curly brackets, dash. And inside, we'll define client first, followed by gateway intent bits. After that, we'll close the curly brackets and write equals require. And inside the require, we'll write the name of the package from which we're importing these. In this case, it's discord.js, since that's where client and gateway intent bits come from. But wait, we can't use discord.js just yet because we haven't installed it. So now let's install it. To install it, open your terminal and type npm install discord.js. This will install the package we want, in this case, discord.js. It might take a little time, and once it's done, it'll be installed. Now, if I show you the package.json file, you'll notice a new section has been added, the dependency section. And inside it, you'll see the package we installed along with its version. But you may also notice something else. A new folder named node modules has been created automatically. So what is this node modules folder? What is the node modules folder? The node modules folder is where NPM stores all the packages you install for your project. It's like the library shelf where your installed tools live. When you install discord.js, NPM downloads it and all of its supporting packages and saves them inside node modules so your project can use them. You should not touch or edit this folder manually. It's managed entirely by NPM. And when you share your project with someone, you don't even need to send the node modules folder. They can just run npm install, and all the required packages will be re-downloaded based on the list in your package.json. And you'll also see another file here called package-lock.json. So what is this file for? Well, the package-lock.json file is automatically created by npm when you install any package. Its main purpose is to lock the exact version of every package and its sub-packages, dependencies of dependencies, that your project is using. You see, package.json only lists the main packages you installed, like discord.js, and allows some flexibility with version numbers. But package-lock.json ensures that every person who installs your project gets the exact same versions of everything, no surprises, no errors. It's super useful for maintaining project consistency across different machines or team members. So even if someone else runs NPM install on their computer, they'll get the exact same setup as you. Mm -hmm. All right, now that we have installed discord.js, we can use all its features. And discord.js doesn't just give us these things. It provides a lot more things that we will use as we go along. But for now, let's understand what exactly client is and what gateway intent bits are. In simple words, the client is like the main part of your bot. It represents your Discord bot itself and lets you connect to Discord, listen to events, send messages, and do everything your bot can do. Gateway intent bits, on the other hand, are like permissions or settings that tell Discord what kind of information your bot wants to receive. For example, if you want your bot to listen to messages in a server, you need to enable the correct intents. They help make your bot more efficient by only getting the data it really needs. Okay, now let's move forward and start using client and gateway intent bits. First, we'll define a variable like const client. 
You can name the variable anything you want, but client is better. Or you can even name it bot, if that's easier for you, since it represents your bot. After that, we write equals new client, open parentheses, then curly braces. Inside the curly braces, we need to give permissions, which are called intents. So here we write intents and assign it an array because we want to provide multiple intents. First, we add gateway intent bits dot guilds, then gateway intent bits dot guild messages, and then gateway intent bits dot message content. For now, these three intents are enough. Now, how do we know these are the intent names and what each enables? There's a link in the description you can click that takes you to Discord's official documentation. Here you can see what each intent does. For example, enabling the guild's intent means your bot will know when a guild, which means a Discord server, is created or when your bot joins a new server. The guild messages intent lets your bot detect when messages are created, updated, deleted, or bulk deleted in the server. And the message content intent is required if you want your bot to read the actual content of messages. So I hope that's clear. Whenever you build any system, check which intents you need. For example, if you build a welcome system, you'll probably need the guild members intent. If you build a reaction role system, you'll need the guild message reactions intent. Now back to our code. You should have a good idea of what's happening here. Next, we want to make the bot print a message in the terminal when it's ready or online. For that, we use the client variable and the once method. So we write client dot one, and inside the parentheses, we put the event we want to listen to. In this case, ready. Then we write an arrow function, and inside it we write console log quote, the bot is now online. This way, when the bot is ready, this message will print in the console so we know the bot is online. Of course, this is optional. The bot will work without it, but it's better to have it so you can be sure. Finally, we need to log the bot in. Otherwise, it won't go online, and you won't be able to register slash commands or anything else. To log in, we use client.logistical, and inside the parentheses, we put the bot token. But wait, we don't have a bot token yet. So let's go to the Discord developer portal and create a new application. I've added the link in the description. When you click it and log in with your Discord account, you'll come to a page. If you've never created a bot before, you won't see anything here. To create a new bot, click the New Application button, then give it a name. I'll name mine Discord.js Series. Then check the box and click Create. Congratulations, your bot is now created in the Discord developer portal. We'll look at this in detail later, but for now, all we need is the bot token. Go to the Bot tab, click the Reset Token button, and copy your bot token. Before going back to the code, scroll down a little on the same page. You'll see three intents listed. Make sure to enable all three intents here as well to give your bot permission. If these intents are disabled here, your bot won't actually be able to use them, even if you enable them in the code. This is a safety feature, so the bot owner can control permissions. After doing all this, you also need to invite the bot to your server to check if it's online. To do this, go to the OAuth2 tab and create an invite link. First, uncheck User Install and then select Bot from the dropdown. Then, select the administrator permission. Don't worry, we'll cover permissions in more detail later. Now, copy the invite link and paste it into your browser to add the bot to your server. Back to the code, Paste the bot token you copied earlier in the client login method. And yes, after I finish this video, I'll reset this token again. So don't try to use it. Make your own bot. One more thing, that little dot you see next to the file name means the file isn't saved yet. Get into the habit of saving your file after every line or chunk of code. To save, either click File and Save, or use the shortcut, make sure the file is selected, then press Control plus S. Once saved, the dot will disappear, meaning your changes are saved. All right. All right, so I have created a server, and here I've pasted the bot's invite link. When I click on it, I can invite my bot to this server. You can see the bot has joined, but it's currently offline. Now, to test the code we wrote, let's run it and see if the bot comes online or not. So go to your code and open the terminal. Now we have two options to run the file. The first way is to type node source c slash index.js 
because our main file is index.js inside the source folder, so we need to give this path. The second way is simpler and shorter. Just type node space dot. But for this to work, we need to go to package.json, and where it says main, currently it says index.js. Since our main file is inside the source folder, we change this to source slash index.js. Then back in the terminal, type node. You'll see in the terminal, the bot is now online. Very nice. Now, if we go to Discord, you can see our bot is online. But right now it doesn't do anything because we haven't added any code yet. But the best thing is it's online. In the next part, we'll add more features to this bot. Also, this is my Discord server. You should definitely join from the description because we do a lot of giveaways, challenges, and events here. If you need any help, you can ask us there, and I also post daily challenges related to this Discord.js series. All right, I hope you liked this video, and if you want more parts, please comment below.